everybody, this is Eric at Learn Design with Eric. I took a web design course in 2009 with the Art Institute uh, International and that course was about 14 months long. I just wanted to fill out the kind of missing element in my graphic design skills and so I went back to school I did this intensive 14 month program where basically what they did was they took out all the core classes from a bachelor's degree program and put them into this thing. So I wasn't gonna get a bachelor's degree out of it because I didn't need that. But what I was gonna get was all of the knowledge about how to use all the software, how to do HTML, how to use CSS and all that kind of stuff. And, and of course back then, Flash was a big thing, so I took a course on Flash, and we all know what happened to Flash, up in thin air. So one of the things that I wanted to point out about that course, just you know, kind of going back here a little bit, is by, from the start of the course, I had Creative Suite, I think I got Creative Suite 5 when I started the course, and by the time the course was over, I was buying Creative Suite 6. And remember, a 14-month program is all I had. Now, five was at the tail end at the time when I bought in because that's all that was available, so I had to get it because the previous version I had was two. Because back then, you bought the software and it was yours. There was no monthly fee, and so you could keep it as long as you needed to. You didn't have to upgrade, unlike today's model, which I'm not as much of a fan of for professional designers. If you're part of a big company, it's not a big deal, but if you're a private company or running your own business, paying 50 bucks a month is, I think, a little bit wrong. I feel like, uh, like if I, like for instance, when I just recently signed up, I'm going on a rant here. Maybe I'll put it in, maybe I won't. But anyway, I, when I just recently signed up again, because I've been using version six for probably 15 years almost now, and I didn't have any real complaints. I mean, on my day job where I where I do design for um, small businesses, I've been using the newest version because we have a license, a monthly license with Creative Suite. And to be completely honest, there's not really that many huge improvements that I felt like I wanted to spend 50 bucks a month. So I didn't do it. I just, I just used the old version. And one of the biggest features was in Photoshop, being able to select an object or uh, like, you know, like just this image that we're looking at right here. Select me out and then fill, fill with background and, you know, be, be able to remove me from the image. That's one of the biggest features that I use in Photoshop. It's a super time saver. I used to have to use the clone tool and just clone stuff out and it was very, very difficult. Uh, it still requires that at times with that tool, but that tool is amazing, right? And that tool started in version six. So like after that, a lot of the other features are like speed ups and I'm pretty quick at Photoshop. So it wasn't really a big deal for me. So I didn't upgrade. Uh, anyway, that's, that's a whole nother story. So I did my school in 2009 and I finished at um, about midway through 2010. And from the start of the school until the end of the school, there were so many changes in graphic design, in software, that by the time I was just out of school, some of the stuff I learned at the beginning, only 14 months earlier, was already obsolete. We were changing from HTML3 to HTML5, just after that. Um, I learned, I, I had to spend probably hundreds of hours while I was in school learning how to use Flash, and shortly after that, Flash was gone. It's just the old way of going to school to learn graphic design, which is what people my age did because that's what we had to do. I think that way's gone. Like, I, I think if you go to school right now for graphic design, you're doing yourself a tremendous disservice. First of all, from the time that you start, if you actually go for a bachelor's degree, to the time that you finish, there's gonna be so many changes, you might as well have not even gone to the first two years. And do you need to know how to write? Do you need to know how to spell? Do you need to know how to write an argument? Absolutely. So you should definitely learn those skills. But as far as going to college to do writing 121, 122, 123, humanities, and all the things that are required for a bachelor's degree, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. I really don't. So 
if, if you're doing that, I mean, because you want to, and you want to have $80,000 in debt, uh, it's probably a lot more now. When I went to school in 2009, I looked into it because I was doing that, that one class, and I thought, oh, well, maybe I should just get my bachelor's degree because I never got it before. You know, I didn't have a bachelor's degree. I had 15 years of experience at that time or 10 years of experience. So I was like, well, I don't really need a bachelor's degree because people that are gonna hire me are hiring me because of my skills, not because I had a bachelor's degree. Bachelor's degree only shows that you know how to show up, really. And beyond that, if you're already doing a job for 10 years, you already know how to show up and you have a great portfolio of work Hopefully, if you've been learning on the side, not just showing up for work and punching the clock. So, and I did, I had a great portfolio. So I didn't need a bachelor's degree. There was no point for me to have a bachelor's degree. So I went to school and when I did, I looked into it. And at the time, again, back in 2009, a bachelor's degree program with Art Institute International was $88,000. Now, if you take a look at $88,000, and at the time I was, what, um, like just before 40, like 39 years old or something like that. So you start looking at like, let's say I was gonna work until I'm 65. Now, I don't know if I'll ever retire, but let's just say for a second that I'm going to retire at 65. So you look at what it's gonna cost to pay off $88,000 over the next, until I'm 65, just divide that out. And it was like 600 bucks a month. Now, am I gonna make $600 more a month than I was gonna already make as a graphic designer because I had a bachelor's degree? Absolutely not. There is no way that was gonna happen. Now, could I go to work for Nike because I have a bachelor's degree? Sure, if I wanted to work for Nike, which I don't. So. You know, it's up to you, really. There's places that require a bachelor's degree that you may really want to work, and if you do, then I guess it's the thing you got to do. But, you, you know, just so you know, as a graphic designer, you do not need a bachelor's degree to be successful in the world. What you need is all the greatest skills, you need a super strong work ethic, and you need an amazing portfolio. When I recently was reviewing applicants for the job that I work at. I'm the lead designer, and so I had basically the purview of who we were gonna hire. I think the first round, I looked at 170 applicants from all over the country. And of those applicants, anybody that didn't even have a portfolio in their listing, I, ne I nixed immediately. They didn't even get a chance. Some people, I can't believe this, but seriously, for a graphic design job, people applied with no portfolio. Seriously, I mean, what are you thinking? So then the next thing was anybody that submitted a resume in any type of software besides a PDF, immediately gone. Because let's face it, if you're a graphic designer and you're submitting your resume on a doc X, then you don't know what you're doing and I'm not hiring you. I don't care what your little thing says, I'm not hiring you. So then the next thing is, of course, does your resume look like it was designed, okay? I mean, this is just the simplest stuff because I got to scale back from 170 applicants. So some of the people supplied an amazing resume that was clearly designed with a hierarchy and of course had great, you know, experiences on them. And so those people made it through into the second round. And I mean, 170 applicants, of course, some people were clear across the country and we're in Oregon. I really didn't want to have a four hour time difference and or, you know, just different different issues with uh, trying to work with somebody. And because I, I get up super early, so it wouldn't really be that big a deal if I, if I work with somebody on the East Coast. But the other logistic thing was that our company would then have to submit taxes to yet another state and it just became a bit of an issue. So we do have some people in different in different uh, states around the country. So I basically kind of limited my, my searching to those states. So we have Oregon, Washington, California, and I think Michigan or something like that. Um, or, or yeah, anyways, like three or four different states. 
And so I limited my, my searching to those states, basically, of all the applicants that I got, and that helped also weed down to kind of the minimum people. And, you know, the bottom line is that the P I was not looking at all if you, had a, if you had a college degree. I mean, if you had one and somebody else you know, if you, if you had one and the person that was exactly equal to you in terms of the portfolio and everything else, then yeah, sure, I guess I'd pick the person that had the, the uh, bachelor's degree. But I mean, honestly, that was not even a consideration. Now, most of the people that I did look at because we were looking for a top tier designer had bachelor's degrees because they had 20 plus years of experience and not unlike me, they went to school to learn because that's what we did 20 years ago. But today, I don't think that you do yourself a service by going out and spending $100,000 or more to get a bachelor's degree in graphic design so that you can start at an entry level position making $27,000 a year or $30,000 a year because $100,000 for somebody that only makes 30 grand a year is basically gonna be a lifetime payment of about 200 bucks a month. And are you gonna make the $200 more a month because you have a bachelor's degree? No. If you, had a, if you started an entry level position and you have an amazing portfolio that you've developed by going out and learning how to do things and applying those skills and applying a strong work ethic, guess what? You're gonna get the job anyway. And especially if you can start at a place like a print shop or at a t-shirt shop or uh, I mean, doing your own thing online, you can create your own business and work and do business cards. I mean, there's always businesses in every town that need business cards, stationery. You can set up, a, you know, work with a, a local print shop and like have a kind of a collaboration where you do the art for them and then they print the stuff. There's a lot of places like that that are just trying to lower their overhead so they're removing employees and they're using contractors. You can contract for those types of businesses. There's just so many ways that you can build your skills, build your portfolio so you can get that real dream job that you want, or better yet, start your own company because then you can make the real money. Because for years and years, I worked at a print shop. I worked at a print shop for about nine years of my total 20 plus that I've been doing graphic design. And I learned a tremendous amount while I was there. I learned all about printers. I learned all about printing. And in later videos, I'll talk about some of those technologies and how those things work and how being a print designer is very different than being a web designer and some of those things. But just for today, we're gonna to stay on the subject of education. So essentially, I, you know, during that time, I of course built my portfolio because I was doing all kinds of different things for different businesses. But also, I started my own side business, my own side hustle, and I started a, a business called Cameron Graphics, which I no longer own, um, but that, that was what I did. And essentially what I started doing was, as some of the businesses would um, need other things that our print shop did not offer, like web design and things like that, that I had skills in, I would just reach out to him and I talked to my boss and so everything, we were not competing or anything like that. And he was like, fine with it. He's like, whatever you do in your own free time is fine. And, you know, essentially I helped kind of support in a way that client wanting to be at our company because they worked with me and they liked me and they were working with the print shop on one hand and on me and me on the other hand, doing other things that they needed for their business that we didn't provide in the print shop. And so it worked out really well. And I, I worked that out so that I could kind of start to grow my business. And then later on, years later, I did decide to, to leave the print shop, mostly just because of some conflicts with you know, superiors and just some things like that that were going on that I didn't like. And I went to work at a bike shop. Um, you can see my wheel behind me there. That's a Bike Friday wheel. I worked at a Bike Friday for about a year and a half. And during that time, I was a, I was a commission salesperson, 100% commission. So if I sold a bike, I did well. If I didn't sell bikes, I didn't do well. And it was, it, you know, starting a brand new type of job, it was hard, you know? So I didn't make a ton of money doing that. I mean, I sold quite a few bikes, but you gotta sell quite a few and then another quite a few to make really good money as a, as a bike consultant. And during that time, I leaned fully into my, into my side hustle because I needed to to make money for my family so we could survive. 
My wife was a stay-at-home mom. We have two kids that are both adopted and one of them has um, Asperger's, so which is autism essentially. And so all of this stuff kind of made it hard for my wife to try to work and for, you know, for me to be able to support the family, I had to do what I had to do. And one of those things was to lean heavy into my business. And so I was doing websites for different, you know, organizations around town. I was doing lots of business cards and I just kind of kept all that stuff going as I was working, you know, my day job. And all that worked together to help me build this tremendous portfolio and basically have my choice of where I wanted to work, which is great, right? So all that to say, think about going to school, think about whether it makes sense and maybe learn, some, learn something from somebody like me that's been doing the business, that's been doing the work. Learn from somebody like me. You don't have to pay me. I'm not, char I'm not charging you for this advice. You just have to show up and watch my video and like and subscribe if you like what you see. And if you really like what you see and you have somebody else that you know that is thinking about going to graphic design school and maybe you just wanna send them a little something, hey, you may wanna think about it before you go off and spend 100 grand so that you can make 30 grand a year or whatever. You know, maybe have a look at what this guy's talking about. Because essentially what I'm doing here, what, what Learn Design with Eric is all about, is to help you guys so that you don't have to do what I did, which is to go and spend a whole bunch of money to get education that was already obsolete by the time I got out of school in only 14 months, and have to spend years paying that off, and you know not really get as much out of it as I could have if I had just gone to somebody like myself that already knew how to do it all, and that was willing to train me and willing to mentor me. And that's what I wanna be for you guys. I wanna be that mentor that's been there and that can help you, help guide you in the future. And so Learn Design with Eric is both a video series that I'm doing on YouTube, which just kind of stuff like what I'm talking about today. And I'm actually working on some classes that are gonna go deeper into certain types of subjects. and I really like to know what kind of subjects you want. So one of the things I'm working on right now is I'm working on a type uh, class. So it's gonna be a much more in-depth class than I can do in a YouTube video series. Because one of the things that you get with a class, when you go to a traditional class, is not only do you get the knowledge, which you can get just by reading books, I mean, honestly, or watching videos online, but it's in a more organized fashion and you get to interact with the teacher and with the other students in a classroom setting. And so that's what I'm working on. And so just keep an eye on this channel. You know, like I said, like and subscribe so you can follow along. And if you want to subscribe uh, or get in a little bit deeper and get a little bit more information about me and about what we're doing, I have a private Facebook group that I created a while back. And uh, I'd like you to join if you, if you want to talk with me directly. And then the other thing is um, I'm creating like a community group that we're going to be using when we start rolling out these training pieces where we're going to be able to talk with the other students ongoing and that kind of thing. So that's, that's kind of what's in the works for Learn Design with Eric, basically to support you guys so that you can learn the design from somebody that's doing it, that's been doing it for years without having to go out and spend a hundred thousand dollars and you know, my fees are gonna be so low that they're like, don't go to coffee once a month. I mean, it's gonna be like nothing. So, you know, I'm just basically gonna charge you enough to cover my costs, essentially. I'm not trying to make a ton of money here. So, basically just join me when, you know, I roll out this stuff and, you know, we can learn together and I can help to train you so that you can go get the job you want or start the business you want so that you don't have to be under the thumb of the government with weights of college debt. So anyway, thanks so much for watching today. Just, you know, this kind of rant that I did with about school and all this other stuff. And uh, welcome to Learn Design with Eric. <laughs>